Well, we have a critical real estate market update today and really want to make sure you are seizing the opportunities that exist right now for your real estate business. Join us on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 209, and you can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan, it's a crazy market. The weather is freaking that crazy around the world. I, I had made an analysis. The earth is on fire, you mean? Yeah, I, I made an analysis yesterday, and this is um, going to be a little self-serving, but it seems as though when the rest of the world is on fire, we have the most pleasant weather here in Southern California. It has oh. been absolutely wonderful for the last two weeks. Mid 80s, oh, beautiful to 60s. Well, I should get out of town and come see you, but I'm too busy seizing all these opportunities we're going to talk about today. Thing, right? yeah. But we are in monsoon season here in Las Vegas, and we've had rain, which has been welcomed. Love it. We've had some flash flooding a little bit around town, but it's been muggy because of it. My it's been humid. My cousin lives in the Grants Pass, Oregon. You know, it gets warm in the in the in Oregon in the summertime. Uh, not a hundred and twelve at five o'clock like yesterday when she sent me her uh, uh, weather update of the week. They've had over ten days of over one hundred degree weather. When's that ever happened in Oregon? I don't think it ever has. It's crazy. But it doesn't also happen in the Northeast. All you Northeast oh. folks that follow us, yeah. it's super hot and of course muggy there. And of well, course, yeah, the Southwest, that, Texas is on fire. The Southeast is right. on and, fire. And, uh, London, uh, you know, England had over. 100 degrees for the first time what ever is happening? on record. Yeah, it's, I know. Is it the is it the near near time, the end times? End times? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Let, but you know what? Even if the end times are coming, we're going to talk about how you better be best be uh, uh, have already adapted to the market that has already shifted. Yeah, but you I'm get really... that transaction to escrow to the very last second. Oh, <laughs> my God. So we're going to talk today and share some stories. And, uh, you know, in the past, of course, we have talked about the importance of being the market expert, knowing your local market. Yes, you need to follow the trends. And I still believe in all the stuff I get at Keeping Current Matters. And I follow the Realtor.com news and, right. you know, uh, two or three other housing news, day, uh, mortgage news daily, all that stuff to know what is happening nationally. You need to know what's going on in the economy. The Fed just raised the rates, uh, the, the Fed fund rate, 75 basis points. A lot of people thought it was going to be 100 basis points. But I... Because the whole goal of the Fed right now is to tamp down inflation so we don't get into a recession. And uh, I saw an article earlier this morning, and I didn't look into it, about the Fed saying, hey, we're not in a recession, but like Europe is in a, set, in a, in a recession. And, you know, we won't really officially know that until what the end of this next quarter, which is coming when we have one, qu one qu quarter of GDP of decline. September. So yeah. we have to wait through the summer into yeah. the the beginning of fall and so forth to kind of know that. But of course they're doing what they can to get that under control. Now I see gas prices. Do you see gas prices? I see them come down, but then they seem to fluctuate again. Right. What, well, what are gas had, prices? We've had almost 50 days of continual dra uh, gas. All right, well, that's a good news. California. We, it, gas has gone down a dollar 20 in the last month and a half. All right. But all these things then have an impact on what's happening with housing from that, from the perspective of the economy in people's pocketbook, and their job security, that can impact their belief on whether or not they should go get a house, the mortgage rates, and all of this. Okay, so let's dive in and just talk real turkey today about reality, why if you know the numbers. And I want to share a couple personal things that have happened for Cosmo and I on our team because of um, just feeling confident about being able to understand what's happening in the market. So you have this national picture. You've got, that's exactly where I want to go, Matt. That's beautiful. Okay. So for you listening, and if you want to go look at some of the charts and stuff that we've got up today or the the uh, some of the resources, just, just go check it out on YouTube. Uh, if you're listening um, to this, you can see some of this. But I'm going to describe what, what I'm showing. This is a weekly sales activity that our good buddy David Squire is the author of this baby, and he has been doing it since 2018. I don't want to scroll because I'll I'll lose the part that I want to talk about. Um, but it's amazing, and we I we use this every week on our uh, TikTok. Yep, I use it in our um, market updates. 
we use it to get informed about what has been happening in the market and report on. And, you know, for the longest time up until June 1st, because that's what I'm going to talk about. And what I'm showing here is you can, if you're looking, you can see February 16th, 2022 to 727. So that was this week. And we're reporting the previous, um, I think it's Monday to Sunday or Sunday to Monday. Anyway, it's the same week every week and he does it on a Wednesday and it's for the previous week, a certain date set. And what we look, what we look at is active inventory under contracts or pendings expires, withdrawn solds days on market average and median sales price average and median. I prefer to look at the median, but the average can tell a bit of a story. We've been looking at price reductions list um, the list price versus uh, sales price weeks of inventory and how many new listings. Okay. That's what we track every single week. Now, up until when the market started to shift, we it was always the same for list price versus sales price. And, you know, we kept on seeing the uh, weekly prices tick up, tick up, tick up, tick up. And now that we're forward from, uh, you know, like six weeks or so, because I feel like it's about six weeks ago, actually, maybe eight weeks ago, because now we're almost on August 1st, right? Next week right. is August 1st. That's right. But on our chart for the Lo Las Vegas realtor area that the MLS carries we can see a, a this story and this is the story that was happening around the whole country right not enough inventory that's what we've been saying for two years not yep. enough inventory crazy amounts of sales cr cr creating the prices to go up and interest rates um low so then we had the first thing that happened is interest rates went up right interest rates went up and then all of a sudden we started to see the contraction of what was happening, right? And we'll go to a mortgage rate thing in a minute to kind of see when did the rates actually start to tick up from the fours and in the fives where they've been hovering around now. Uh, not quite at six, but somewhere between and somewhere in the fives, right? In mid fives, five and a half. It was up around five, seven at the top there. And and but some exciting stuff happened this week, which we'll get to. But Active inventory has, just in this view that we're seeing, gone from 1,778 available homes that were for that snapshot of the week to, in June 1st, 3,500. So slowly increasing. But here's the crazy story. 35, 3,700, 4,000, 4,600, 5,100, 5,700 to last week, almost 7,000. Right. Just looking at that, now we have to correlate it, right? Because it's like, why all of a sudden do we have more inventory? Well, if you come over and you and you check this, and it's all in the MLS, it's because we got more listings came on the market at the beginning of that time period. We're looking at it was 608 per, for the week. And now we're at, uh, for four weeks in a row, we almost had 1,000, five weeks in a row. This is 9, 12. We're at you know, somewhere between 9 and 1,000 in the last six-week period. So why? Because sellers started to sense oh my God, there's more inventory and I may not get the top of the market. I might That's have missed right. the top of the market, right? That's right. So people started to, why Why couldn't you get more listings on the market a year ago or six months ago? Because sellers were like, I don't have anywhere to go. And the interest rate, you know, is, to, is I have a good interest rate. But now I think many people are like FOMO. Oh my gosh, I might have missed out. Yeah. Right? And before it was, if I wait another mm -hmm. month, I'll get another 50,000. Exactly. More. So, you know, so anyway, we have a crazy things happening. It takes a minute for everybody to figure it out, but not you. If you stay on top of the market, you can be having these conversations that we talked about in our podcast to uh, two, a month ago, two a month when this all started happening, right? Yeah, so we have that figure under contract slowed down. Like back here in February it was 781 in a week. Last week it was 468. Why? Because buyers are like the interest rates are too high, or I, you know, they're they're waiting. They're waiting to see if the prices come down lower. Investors are sitting on the sidelines waiting for the prices to come down lower. That's what everybody thinks, right? And it's the same thing. The sellers are like, I'll wait until, for whatever reason. And then as soon as the sign shifts, it's too late. It's already moved. Yeah. But nobody can actually predict the bottom and the top until we're already there and past it, right? But this weekly chart can help you with that. So we were tracking all of this. So under contracts have slowed down. And here is the crazy thing, Matt. Look at the price reductions. So if I, I just have it highlighted from June 1st, Okay, in the beginning of the year, 78 price reductions in a week, 80 price reductions in a week. June, 365. The last two weeks, 1,117, 1,176. Now, 
if you can't, this is, this is so powerful to have this chart for your knowledge and for when you're working with a buyer and a seller, it's, it allows you to tell the story of why, Mr. Seller, we need to list our price here. Hey, buyer, we're going to get an opportunity possibly because look what's happening. I mean, in, for the longest time, we're finally getting below 100% of list price to sales price ratio, and that'll get into the 90s eventually. And then, of course, weeks of inventory went from 3.3 weeks of inventory to 16.3 weeks of inventory. So this chart helps us realize that. And what I was looking for is where did the prices start to decrease on a weekly average, uh, median uh, basis? And that happened for us. We, we, we hit 499 on 615, June 15th. And since then, we've been going down 479, 480, 473, 475, 465, 458 last week. Okay. From a high of almost 500 as a median sales price, we're back down around 4 uh, 58. And that's just a weekly number. So, you know, obviously four plus weeks makes up what the months are going to be. And they're going to take that median. So in Vegas, we went from a high of 482 in, in uh, May, median sales price. In June, it was 480. In July, as we finish up July, because, because here's what's awesome. Because we're looking at here, uh, 473, 475, 465, 458, we can kind of project and go, what's the average of all of those four weeks? And if we look at it 460 to 475, we're probably going to be, well, God, he's right. Cosmo was, Cosmo was telling me, he looks at this more than me. He's like, Jan, we, we could be at like 470. I'm like, no, we're not going to be go from 480 to 470. But honestly, Matt, can you do the math with me? Yeah, that's about right. Is that about right? Yeah, no, that's uh, absolutely. Okay, so this is going to be the first. So we had a 2000 price drop. Is it possible we're going to see a 10,000 median price drop? Yes. But for two years, we've been going another 10,000 right. appreciation, another 10,000 appreciation, a similar story in California. It's not the same rates of acceleration all across the country, but it's pretty straight on. So isn't that cool how ex I get excited about these numbers because I understand them and I've been studying them and it a lot gives me the confidence to talk to my clients. Let me ask you a question. It's one thing talking to your clients about that, which is obviously the key, right? And, and I, I have to go back to the whole national stats too. It's really important that you understand what they're actually hearing because most people are hearing national stuff, not local stuff. So you got to start there and then get them down into the local market, right? And get down there. But let me ask you a question. Have you had the uh, opportunity opportunity or the uh, the the moments over the last couple of weeks or last month or so to actually start educating agents? Because I know that you're doing a lot. You've been working with a few buyers and writing quite a few contracts. Have you, have you had to do a little bit of educating to the listing agent saying, hey, yeah. yeah. Well, because most of them generally know, yes, we're in the middle of it, but they don't they don't have the granular like uh, understanding of it. And that's but the it's key, though, and this is how I it. this is how most people go through everything, right? Like it's literally, um, you know, I, I've been, we know, they know it because they can simply see that they're not getting 10 showings and 20 showings and it's price. So everybody knows enough that like the market has shifted and they're hearing it from different places. We just go deeper on it, I guess. Yeah. It's a great question that you're asking. Okay. So let's talk about the mortgage interest rates for a second and, and why I think that I just, it's not, it's, this is just to, 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 without getting so in the weeds about how does the mortgage rates adjust what we what i want to say today is don't be the agent that says the interest rates are going to go up because the fed jerome powell just you know in the in the 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 federal reserve moved the fed rate the federal funds rate up 75 basis points if you really study this that is why they're doing that of course is to get inflation under control right so we got to we've got to increase the short term interest rates okay which is going to impact people's credit cards if you go get a car loan it's that's really the rates it's going to impact um and the whole idea is to uh have people have you know it's just a whole counterintuitiveness right like we've got to slow things down to get inflation down again. If people don't want everything, then the, the markets will adjust and they don't all go out and buy gas if you don't go out and buy everything. But of course, we still all have to live. That's the whole philosophy behind all that without getting into, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a session on uh, uh, the economy economics. and, you know, right. economic global, right. global economics. <laughs> exactly. Huh. But I hear people say, well, the rates are going to go up. But if you if you study mortgage rates and my recommendation is just 
find something. I particularly like Mortgage News Daily. Housing Wire has a lot of stuff on it. And I have it as an app on my phone. There was an article that they put out. I couldn't find it. That was two days ago that when the Fed stuff came out that said, repeat after me, the Fed fund rate does not equal mortgage rate adjustments. That's awesome. Okay. And that's exactly the message I want you to hear. And I'm looking at an article that says how to explain the huge drop in the mortgage rates this week because the mortgage mortgage rates went down to 522 yesterday or the day before. And that's awesome. But for FHA, 4.75. Okay. That's yeah, over a half a point. That's big. Right? Yep. So in a nutshell, the mortgage industry is following the rates more closely go with the bond market and the 10-year treasury. But they're also, they've already made the adjustments knowing what the Fed's going to do. That's why they moved those prices up in the beginning of a, right. a few months ago. And they already made that hike adjustment. But at the same time, there's going to be probably pressure to get, you know, to not have it go too high because we don't want to stop people from completely buying houses, which will, which would impact the housing industry more. But at the same time, that's what I think is happening, right? So it's, it's already, they're looking to the future. They're looking to see what's happening and they've already built the rate adjustments in. Now, if we end up in a recession and then we come out of the recession, there's charts out there that really show, I just put it in mind. I got it from Keeping Current Matters that that show every recession in the last however many years, 20, 30 years, how mortgage interest, um, as we come out of a recession, drop to stimulate the economy again That's and right. get people buying. So it's possible if we do go into a recession that we'll see lower interest rates again, even a little bit lower. I don't think we'll ever see threes again. That was those low interest rates were to get us out of the pandemic, right? And to, to what, you know, the Fed rate went down to zero or so at one point, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so make sure you know what you're talking about, but here's where it matters. You don't, do you have to know, like, don't go out there and say, well, that went up. So the rates are going up. So you better buy a house. That's where I'm saying like, you're, you're wrong. Okay. And they fluctuate every single day. So when you have it on your phone, you can see what's going on. And then of course your clients are out looking at these rates and then every lender is slightly different. And they may have points. They may have a portion of a point to get that lowest rate. Um, and then what your client gets is based on them. What's their credit score? Right. What kind of a risk are they? Do If they're at the 740 and higher, 720 and 40, they're going to get better interest rates. If they're in the 600s, they're not going to get the quoted interest rates. But I know you know all that, uh, our dear listeners. But here's what I wanted to be able to share about, uh, you know, there's so many good things that are out here and then we can we can stop sharing this and just talk for a second here and get back to our uh, I just want to be able to share how staying on top of how that uh, what's happening and in a quickly moving market. If you get this, how you can maybe put a deal together. OK, so what a couple things that have been happening for us, Matt, is we know since I basically in June, but it's even gotten even more intense in the last three weeks. We are seeing major deals, available deals, because sellers are making price reductions, but they're still not all getting offers. So we've been writing in the last two contracts we put under, we were able to get our clients 10 to 15,000 off the list price, plus get some concessions and some closing costs because they didn't have any offers. All right. That's so crazy. that's been happening you obviously can get in there now with with these issues the what we still see is there's a lot of properties that investors have taken and flipped or people have renovated and they look nice now months ago we were talking about if a house looks great and it's priced right it's going to get multiple offers we're still seeing that we were just involved and lost one because you know if it really isn't a price point that's below like our 480 is our median price, but we have some clients that are in 350, 360. If a good house comes on the market in the 300s, then it's going to sell, yeah. right? So you're yeah. still going to deal with that. You can't say every house we go out there, I'm going to be able to get you a deal. But now we're in the place where it's like, oh my God, Matt, I'm looking in the MLS. And what I see is $3,500 bonus to the agent. We're going to give you 5,000 towards cost so you can buy the interest rate down, whatever it takes. It's almost like, Whatever the sellers are going from, and I saw some memes and stuff on social that say, you know, people you know, saying six months ago, sellers, um, 
yeah, you know, uh, no, I'm not taking that offer. And if you bring me 10,000 over and you waive all your contingencies, your house is sold. I mean, you can have my house. Now they're like, Mr. Buyer, Please. here's the home warranty. Please, yeah. you know, I mean, exactly. it's a joke, but not really. It is kind of what's happening, right? And you're seeing it in the the energy in the MLS of like, this is, come on, we got a deal here. Come, you know, bring all offers, seller motivated. We weren't seeing that three, six months ago. It was like, get in line write a clean offer and maybe we'll choose you. Yeah. All right. And buyers have gotten so frustrated. So how many of you listening have buyers who had burnout and they said, forget it. I'm not doing this anymore. That's the buyer we're working with right now. And she stopped looking and then she discovered us and started working with us. She found us through TikTok. And now here's how she's benefiting. So we're now showing her homes that she wouldn't have been able to see even just a month ago because they weren't in her price point. Right. So now of course what we're doing, she wants to keep her at the time, she wanted to keep her sales price at 330 and this is what's important what I'm trying to talk about here. She wants to keep her sales price at 330 because the lender was had qualified her and said you can qualify for more but you want to keep your payment around 2000 2200 at the most. Well the payment was and the sales price came from what the interest rate was on her mortgage at the time right. was five, six, five when she got pre-approved. So five, six, five meant a three thirty sales price. Okay. So we wrote a couple offers. We weren't able to get them on. One of them fell apart because the house was needed too much work. And now what happened. And so we've been working through about a month. And so she's in town and we went and showed her a couple properties yesterday that were flippers. One was open door. One was uh, an investment company that really does a great remodel. And both of these had a similar story. So one a little bit longer. So a month ago, they were both, one was at 395, one was at 360. And they have every week brought their prices down. Okay. So they, six months ago, they, that guy might've gotten 390 on that house, but not now. Okay. Right. So right. it's down, it's down. And all of a sudden it shows up on our radar because now of course we're searching. We don't search for 330 in the MLS. Six months ago, we would go to 335, 340 because we knew we weren't going to be, you know, we'd be really close to looking for something that was 330. Right. Now I'm looking at, we're going up to 350 for Anna because maybe we can get 340 for her or 335 sure. or, or whatever, or we can get 330. Okay. So we actually wrote a deal the other day that was that, and um, we thought it was going to come together, and then it didn't. So then this is what happened. We wrote a contract yesterday um, on one of the properties that was listed for um, like 340, and the offer was it had just reduced down to 341, and we wrote an offer at 325 and closing cost. And the agent came back and said, hey, we're having multiple offers. You're close, but it's not you know, bring me your highest and best. So we came back at 3.30 with still 11,000 under with closing cost. And she had indicated that the investor was probably ready, but the investor changed their mind and said, we just reduced, we think we're in the price point. We're, and they didn't take the other offer, which was cash, which was even lower. So the cash offer was significantly lower than our offer. Interesting. And they, he didn't take either of them. So we went and wrote on another property and we did a similar, we called to say, look, our client wants to stay at this price point. Can this even work? And she said, let me find out. And so the, she called back and said, he just reduced it two days ago from 370 to 360 to 350 to three, like he's at 340 now. And he's just going to wait it out. Three, if you bring a full list offer with some concessions, he will, he'll consider it. We're like, she can't do it. It's 340. She's only qualified for 330. And then all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, the interest rates just went down. Yeah. Hello. Exactly. So let's get the lender on the phone. So she was, because we were at lunch and she told me what her rate was. It reminded me it was 565. So we got on a conference call with the lender and said, let's crunch numbers right now. Can we get her payment at 2000? Can you look and run her file and see with the rate that you could lock in today, or to, rather it would be today if we can get this offer accepted because we wrote it last night she actually was going to be less than what we had quoted yesterday on a $10,000 more house. So the, I know that was a long way to get that out, but I'm trying to help you see guys that you have to be so aware of what's happening. We now have a client who fell in love with this house, but was thinking it's out of my price range, but because the interest rates dropped and we could act quickly and we did some negotiating to see what we could do, 
and that thing has come down and it definitely will, I think it'll appraise no problem at that price point. Um, she may be able to get a house that she wouldn't have been able to get a month ago at a, at a payment, get a bigger house at a payment that is going to be a little less than she was about ready to accept $2,200 on the deal that, that didn't work right? and not get the house that she wanted. So we're not there yet. We still have to have an accepted offer. It's not done until it's accepted and we're open in escrow, but is that not awesome? And it's no, like, it's, that's the opportunities that you have if you're aware of what's happening. It's the best story because so many people, th that story, 80, more than 80, 90% of the time would have been like, well, we lost that one moving on, right? It would have been that because if you don't go that extra step and look at that, and I'm going to tell you what you're talking about is now more than ever, it's crucial to have a lender that is on top of it, right? That's saying, hey guys, we might be able to push her up a little yeah. bit more because, um, Oh, goodness. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I got distracted. I was like, I thought I was getting the news that they had accepted that offer. Sorry. That guys. would have been awesome. <laughs> or live. No, I was. it was in our my text stream. So my text, group text, uh, but it's not that. But anyway, that is really what we wanted to share today was that it's a moment in time as we're here. And then when the next time we get on here and do our podcast, it's going to be, I think, more of the same. We're moving yeah. more into a uh, not a hot seller's market, if anything. You know, the strict definition by most people is where when it gets into five months of four to five months of uh, inventory, and we're at about 2.2 .2 here in Vegas, um, then we're in a neutral market and six plus is a buyer's market. But honestly, I think my definition of buyer and seller markets is who's in control. Yep. And it's been the seller up until this point. Right now, the seller is not in control. The seller's in control of what they price their house at. But to get the to get enough people that if the conditions stay the way they are right now and we don't have a ton more buyers come on the market as soon as more buyers come on the market which this is what's going to happen potentially i feel like there's a window of opportunity based on the story i just told yeah. but as soon as people feel like we're even lower and more buyers go wow the interest rates i'm jumping back in or investors start jumping in the game to buy up properties to get low because they think that they get if they can hit the lower they can time the market now we'll have competition again so we're in a weird space, personally, I'm seeing it here in Vegas, that there, I think there's opportunities for buyers and sellers. Because if you're a seller, this is what you would say to your seller. If you're a seller, you could still potentially get a decent, because it's per perspective, Matt. If you're a seller here in Vegas that bought their house prior to 2020, at least 2020, because if you bought your house just a year ago, then there's maybe some issues. You have so much equity. You just in since 2020 to now, the av the median equity is like around one hundred and thirty five thousand yeah. dollars right. in two year period. So even if we go from four eighty five down to four forty, you still have one hundred thousand equity put into perspective. Right. right. So you could still sell. But now you're a buyer doing exactly what I just talked about, getting that house that you wanted to get. Maybe an interest rate's not at 3.25 that you had on your other house, but you just get all your equity out and now you can go do something else if moving. And this is the conversation you can have with your clients if you're aware of what's happening in the market. So I get off my soapbox. It's very exciting. That's a good it's exciting time. Awesome. But the whole point is this news shall pass. We will yeah. be in another cycle and it will be different in the coming months. We'll see what happens and it will be there will still be buyer opportunities in my opinion. And, and I think sellers are just going to have to be realistic that we're, those times of these crazy prices are gone now. And we'll eventually get back to healthy five to 8% appreciation every year in a year or two. That's you know, my thought. Let's, let's switch gears just a little bit, Jan O'Brien, because if you are a uh, student of the market, as you and Cosmo are clearly, and you are watching what's going on, you're helping clients do their thing. You know, if you have ever, ever, ever thought about building a team, this might be the time to absolutely do that because people are agents would be, would be flocking to you. If you could teach them how to actually put deals together like this, we have an awesome team builder program as we've talked about a lot. So, you know, if you, it really, it's always a good time, but if, it's, if there's a, a time that you've been, been putting that in your, your, it's been in the back of your head and you uh, would like to uh, get more information about it, we have a couple courses, actually. We got a free intro to Team Builder uh, course. Yes. If you go over to our site. <clears throat> kind of see if building a team is right for you. You know, go check that out. That's over on uh, WBNLcoaching.com. And then also our, our, pre our premium or our uh, premier uh, proprietary course is Real Estate Team Builder, 
which um, gosh, we've had, we, we, we created what Jan about six years ago, seven years ago. We yeah, created that I think it was like 2015, right? Yep. Been and updated we several that. times. Well, we updated it though. We did it in 2015 oh, yeah. and then we, we did an update. Uh, what, like three years ago, maybe two, three years ago. We, yeah, re we, we, recorded it. we we have been having a little run on people inquiring about team building lately. And so that's why I wanted to bring that up. It's interesting. So, um, you know, if you're interested, check us out because we will be more than happy to help you build. Yeah. And honestly, what's it? Matt, that's, you're right on with that. We've been having all these inquiries about that. And then if you do go, if, you, if you're if you not ready to dive in and invest, then go check out our free intro course. That's, that's going right. to tell you the way we teach and what we have. And and that generally has has led people to get that and then go, yeah, this is the course for me. So that's why we did it. So you can see hey, if you Jenna like Brand, what we have Jenna to bring. Brand and Cosmo um, have had a team for a while, but they're really putting uh, their energy into it more than ever and do, using all the techniques that we're talking about. My goodness gracious, already number three in the company. <laughs> teams but there's not tons of teams so we have to I know, well, that's besides the point you know what i mean that's a good, th thank you matt that's very nice so we share that information so yes we're having a lot of fun and we're the, the things that we're bringing to you on the podcast and what we have in our training programs is real world real life we do it every day and you know we're not uh it's what works for us that's all we're doing is sharing with you so we appreciate uh, you guys coming along for us with us for this ride and please take advantage of all the stuff we have over on the wbnlcoaching.com over on our youtube channel matt's always putting stuff up every week that is basically either our podcast or pulling something from our arsenal of training and, and sharing something that's going to help you so there's those are resources that are free absolutely all right well all right. That's, a wrap. that's a wrap for this week you can that's find all of our show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com episode 209 uh be safe out there try to stay cool if you're someplace that's uh, burning up and uh be forever wandering but not lost yes please